I am really stressed out because I have a massive assignment due in and I have literally no idea where to start when it comes to doing a literature search and searching for papers. How do I figure out which one's the most necessary? How do I know that I've hit all of the right literatures without leaving any key bits out? I just, I'm so stuck. <laughs> my channel if that in the previous still preview is you then you are in the right place because today we are going to be discussing the age-old problem of the literature search i'm going to be sharing how i go about doing a literature search again disclaimer this is by no means the correct way to do a literature search or the only way to do a literature search it is the way that i do a literature search when i'm first faced with a big assignment or a big project or whatever this kind of video is for you if you are a beginner to the world of research maybe you're in your first year of your phd or your master's degree or even your undergraduate degree I'm going to be covering the most useful websites that I use for doing a literature search how I use those websites and when I use them and as a little recommendation from someone else in the comment section last week we are going to be covering two AI driven tools for doing a literature search that have revolutionized the way that I see literature searches so without further ado let's dive in okay so the first thing that you're going to need when starting your literature search is obviously your trusty computer okay Okay, so as you guys can see here, we have the little PubMed website open and we have our search bar. And in our search bar, we can now type in what we want to search. So let's pick a random topic, ultrasound treatment for reducing the size of tumors or something random like that. We might say like cancer, ultrasound, as you can see here, we've got a lot of different results. We've got 264,000, almost 265,000 results. That is a lot. Um, so we're not gonna read every single one of those papers because that would take a lot of time and our time is precious. So the other thing that I like to do on PubMed rather than just searching stuff is I like to make use of these little filters down here. Now, this is just something that you can do for a generic search, but what I find really useful is this little graph here. And that basically um, helps us filter by date. So say we're only really interested in stuff that was published in a specific date range we can slide this little adjuster here but here we can see we've now updated it to 165,000 results if you go down to the bottom here the publication date section you can change this to be even more specific so say we're only interested in stuff that's been published in the last five years we can click that little button or we can even make a custom date range which is also really really handy the other thing that you can do is you can filter by article type so let's say that we're just wanting to dive into a broad overview of a topic and we want a review paper that's going to tell us about it published in the last year. If you look, automatically that's taken our results down. I mean, it's still loads of papers and we're gonna get even more specific on that in a minute to narrow it down. But what you can do is you can click additional filters here and it tells you all, oh my goodness, look how many filters there are. So now I wanna go back to our PubMed home. Let's go back, let's pretend that we haven't done that. I don't know why it keeps zooming in. I'm really sorry that you will have to put up with this, but um, let's go to the advanced search button. I've talked about this so much, but this is where I do the majority of my searching. So let's go advanced search. And you get this little window here so we've got our search term box here we've got our query box term here and we've got our search box here so what we can do is we can enter search terms and then add them to our query box which will build a massive query or a massive search oh i just want to introduce someone mm, i've got another kitten this is mimi everyone sort of friends with dong dong but she's um 11 weeks old now and she's very cute and she's a new member of our little family Okay, so the first bit of vocabulary I want to talk about when we talk about the advanced search feature is the term Boolean operator. Now, you might have heard this term thrown around quite a lot, but for someone that was new to research, I certainly had never heard of it. So for those people out there who have no idea what a Boolean operator is or why you should care, then I'm going to tell you exactly why you should care about Boolean operators. Boolean operators are represented by this little drop down here. So you see where it says add. If you click on the little arrow, it says add with and, add with or, add with not. And those are your Boolean operators. So let's Let's think of an example. So let's say we're talking and we want to generate search results for cancer. So we put it in little quote marks because that will search for the exact terms. We've got cancer. And um, then we can use the Boolean operator or to list synonyms for cancer that might um, crop up in our search terms. So let's say a paper is talking about tumors. That wouldn't come up if we just typed cancer, but it is still cancer. So we need to be more specific and we need to think of all of the synonyms that can go with cancer. So we can have cancer or with that little Boolean operator, 
tumor but if we're english we might say tumor or neoplasia all of these types of things so this is how we use boolean operators to say basically search for all of the papers that include the word cancer or tumor or neoplasia or neoplasm and we're covering all of our bases here what you can do is make this even more specific so if you can see here it says all fields we can use this drop down to say like you want to include this in the title or in the abstract or whatever like you can say title or abstract so let's do that so we want to include cancer or tumor da, 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 in the title or the abstract then what we can do is go ahead and click add and that will add that to our little query box down below but we don't just want to talk about cancer we were also talking about ultrasound weren't we so let's um again go ahead and add all of the synonyms for ultrasound so ultrasound or then what we're going to do is we're going to click this button you notice it used to say add but now it's saying and so that's basically saying that's our boolean operator so it's saying we're searching for anything that includes these terms down here, so cancer, tumor, blah, 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 and ultrasound or ultrasonography. So we could have tumor and ultrasonography, that kind of thing. But we're interested in treatment, so we're gonna go ahead. You basically repeat this for every uh, term in your research question or your research goal. But let's say that we want original research papers and we don't want to include review articles. That's when we can use the Boolean operator not. So we can go down here and we can click publication type and we don't want review articles. So we type in review, we click add with not and then this is our little query box so basically this looks really confusing and horrible and disgusting but what we've asked it to do is we've said please can you search for all of the papers that have in their title or abstract cancer tumor da, 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 and ultrasound da, 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 and treatment therapy but not review articles so that's what we're doing and then what we can do is we can advance search and we can click go so automatically we have a lot fewer results than we did last time if you remember when we clicked go before we had like now we've only got 23,000. so then what we can go do is we can go ahead and we can continuously filter free full text that's cut it down even more full text da, 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 da. Um, so this is just a basic quick overview of how i use the advanced search feature in its basic 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 format so now let's talk about another feature of the pubmed literature search that i tend to do that is something called mesh terms now instead of using the search bar what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and we're going to use this little thing here called mesh database mesh terms are basically vocabulary headings uh, for broad research topics the thing i like about this is that they have all been manually create curated manually curated and hand added to every article so that means that it tends to be more accurate when you're searching rather than using like that little search box you can search for mesh terms within your advanced search so you can get really creative and really build up a nice nice specific advanced search to really narrow down your filter today we're going to talk about ultrasound treatments so let's say ultrasound and we can see there's a load of like mesh terms coming up here high intensity focus ultrasound ablation that sounds like we're getting rid of some some things with ultrasound so we can click there and it gives you this little page so this is our main heading for high intensity of ultrasound ablation and then there's little subheadings so let's say we want to talk about the maybe adverse effects of this and the methods that we get from this what we can do is we can restrict this to a mesh major topic and that basically means that it's the main mesh term associated with the paper we're basically saying we want high intensity focused ultrasound ablation to be like the main mesh term that we're looking at so we're getting really really specific here then we can go over to this and as you can see there's our boolean operator again and we can add to search builder that gives us a little thing there and we can search pubmed so we can get really specific with this kind of stuff then we can go ahead and we can filter even more and that's just how i tend to use mesh terms when i found out about mesh terms honestly it was like life changing because what you can then do is as i said before add that to your advanced search feature and then you're all good to go okay so now i want to talk a little bit about the ai focus tools that i have been using very recently this is only the last week that i've discovered this which is why i wanted to share so let's say hypothetically you've done your pubmed search but you're like oh my goodness how am i ever going to know if i've included all the relevant papers and what if i'm missing some like seminal paper in this and that is a definite worry like it's definitely possible to miss papers and you these two websites are are both great tools that I've been using to try and grab on to some of the seminal papers in my area. So I'm gonna first start with um, LitMaps. Now LitMaps is an AI generated tool that you can use to search for relevant papers based on one existing paper that you found. So let me demo that quickly. And we can see that we've got the DOI and that is basically a paper's unique identifier. So then what we can do is we can go onto LitMaps 
Oh my goodness, I can't. Oh, what am I typing? We can go into litmaps.com. We can copy and paste that DOI here. And what litmaps is doing is it's finding our little seed map. So as you can see here, this is the paper that we started with. Generated all the papers that are vaguely related to this paper. It shows you which ones are connected to which ones and a nice little map interactive format, which I really like. You know, like it just, like there's some great videos on how this all works. You can make maps based on top like it's just it's just a really nice way of doing things the other way the other website that does this is something called connectedpapers.com and personally I prefer connectedpapers.com to lit maps I just find it more intuitive and I seem to get more relevant results from it but I could just be not using it right so it's basically the same thing copy and paste the DOI so here we go we've got our paper and what it's going to do is it's going to build us a little graph of all the related papers in the same way that lit maps does so let's wait for that to do that and here we are, we've generated, look at this little map. Already it's bigger than the last one, which I really like, but it literally gives you a little explanation down here of how to read the graph. The node size is the number of citations. The node color is when it was published. This one here is our source article. So as you can see down here, it's gonna say lighter the color is the earlier it was published. And then as you get darker, maybe the more recent it was and the more relevant it gets. I really like to look at is this expand function. And that gives us a similarity to origin. So this is our original paper, obviously it's 100 and you can sort it by similarity. So this paper is the most similar. It's by the same author. This one has the most citations. Like you can really look at the references, like all of these different things. And it basically generates this really, really, really nice list that you can do. I just think that the whole thing is like super, super um, useful. And it's a nice little AI generated tool that has saved me a lot of time when I've been doing literature searches over the past few weeks and it's also made me aware of some of the limitations in my um, hand literature searching and helped highlight some of the papers that I might have missed before. Okay, so there you have it. That is how I tend to do my literature reviews. Again, I wanna say this is just a very, very basic beginner guide into um, what some of the common terms are we see thrown around in these literature searching things like mesh terms, Boolean operators, how to use PubMed, things like that. Um, and also two really fun AI generated tools that I've come across. I hope this has been helpful for you and you've enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next week for another one. Bye.